we don't start off as leaders in our career. We start off as individual performers and we get to where we are because we're good at doing tasks, we're good at achieving things. But anyone who's had to make a leadership journey knows that being a leader and being an individual performer are two completely different things. And that's really the biggest paradox, I think. Welcome to Agile Leaders Conversations. Agile Leaders Conversations is a series of dialogues where we engage industry leaders in discussions of how they see and apply agility and navigate paradoxes as they lead and pivot in a new normal. My guest today is Mr. Andrew Shuttleworth, Country Manager yep. of Cloud Day Singapore. I will hand over the time to Andrew to share a little about himself. Hey there, uh, thanks for inviting me for the interview. Good to chat on a Saturday morning. I've been in Singapore for three years. Uh, I came here with a, a large multinational. Before I was based in Japan for 18 years, so most of my career, I studied uh, marketing and Japanese at school. It became a goal for me to move out to Japan. That happened with my first company. But after 18 years, an opportunity came to move to Singapore and uh, I jumped at it. I actually had never been to Singapore at the time, but South Asia and Singapore had always been on my target list of places potentially to take my career to the next level. So I jumped on it, moved over here and just passed the Three year mark. So uh, I guess I've done quite a lot in three years. It seems like longer, but happy here now and uh, enjoying building the business with Cloudis. Andrew and I connected on LinkedIn and gave me many invaluable feedback, even looking at my website as well. So really thankful for any feedback that I can get along the way. And I think it really shows how Andrew interacts with people, always giving value. So I fully appreciate that part very much and making time on a Saturday morning for this conversation to happen. Andrew, would you share with us what are your general thoughts of the book after reading it? Sure, yeah. I have to admit, I often download samples for a, a lot of books. I guess I used to read a lot more business books and things. These days, I really don't make time for reading at all. So it's actually a miracle, uh, but also a testament that I actually made my way through it. The topic resonated with me, but also found it really well authored and to the point, but not into kind of too much detail. I find a lot of business books they just bore you with too much detail they're padded out way more than they need to be so i went ahead and bought it straight away and i think i sat down on a sunday afternoon and just worked my way through it certainly it resonated with me the way it's written and the way it's designed as well is really well done thank you so much this is exactly the intention behind writing eight paradoxes of leadership agility make it simple because knowing that leaders these days are all very busy we really need something very easy to consume, something that we can just take and immediately apply in our lives. It's very good to hear that it resonated with you. So was there a paradox that resonated strongly with you? And would you share a little about that? Yeah, the first one was the tasks versus people. And as I went through, I found that some also executing versus inspiring and enforcing versus empowering also tie into similar themes. Probably tasks versus people is important for maybe a newer leader. We don't start off as leaders in our career. We start off as individual performers and we get to where we are because we're good at doing tasks, we're good at achieving things. But anyone who's had to make a leadership journey knows that being a leader and being an individual performer are two completely different things. And that's really the biggest paradox that you have to get over when you become a leader because getting things done is simply a matter of you've got a to-do list you get through it and yay <laughs> you're, you're the hero but you can't treat people like that if you treat people like that you're not going to be a very successful leader so for me that was the uh, one that hits most you really speak about the common pain point for many leaders because as we rise up the ranks changing from an individual performer to a people leader, the skills required are actually quite different. And this probably is one of the biggest shift that continues to allow leaders to be successful in the future. So that's really a great point that you have brought up. There was also a definition of leadership agility and of paradoxes in the book. I'm wondering from your lens, how do you define leadership agility or paradoxes? Yeah, I'm not sure I have my own definition, but needless to say, agility is important. It's understanding change is the only constant. You have to get used to just being able to change. And I think as humans, we're naturally conditioned to finding a comfort zone. You have to 
understand that if you're in a comfort zone, there's a cost of that comfort. You're losing the ability to develop through experience. And yeah, adapting to the fact that change is going to be part of your everyday life. Change does cost time and money and investment and brain power, but that's just something you have to get used to. And I think if you understand that and you embrace that, that's when you become an agile leader or an agile person. Yeah, the mindset huh? and accepting that we always have to change and also be mindful that staying in the comfort zone is very comfortable, but it comes with a price. Yeah, and I think there's a lesson when you're thinking about change or you're thinking about what is the cost of not doing something because it seems we always look at the cost of doing something because it's easier to evaluate. It's right in front of you, but the cost of not doing something is actually not as obvious. And so if you really think about that, I think we're all animals, right? We're all driven by fear in many respects. So if you can turn that cost factor, the cost of not doing something into a driver, that really helps you push through that change. I like this definition too. In the book, I talked about the good stress versus bad stress. So how can we convert the bad stress into the good stress or the driver that you say? Perhaps convert it into motivation and drives us forward. And I think moving forward then is the only option most of the time given that right now the rate of disruption is getting faster and definitely good reminders there what about paradox how do you know there's a paradox when it shows up in leadership when you're managing people every day you actually know the answer but oftentimes you're wrong or there's maybe multiple ways of doing things so it's important not to jump to the easiest course of action telling someone what to do or what you think you really have to take a step back be a little patient as someone told me many years ago learn to ask Ask better questions and learn to help. It's a coaching role, right? You have to teach people to help themselves. But in the course of day-to-day -day business, when you've got a deadline or you've got goals to deliver on by the end of the week, it's very difficult to actually do that when you just want to deliver on your goals. That's another great point. Looking at the role of a leader differently, that we have to equip people with the right skills so they can make the decisions for themselves. But at the same time, the struggle for leaders is that we get so busy and sometimes we forget. And sometimes spending time with people to equip them with the skills takes more time at the beginning. But maybe the payoff comes much later and it's all worth it. So right yeah. now, how has the COVID-19 situation changed the way you conduct your business and lead teams? Yeah, I think an important point leads to what you were just saying about spending time with people. In some ways, it's been good because you can work very efficiently. And we're a tech company, so we're fine working remotely. We're fine with digital tools and we're enjoying it. But I do question myself, is there anything that we're missing as a result of not being in the office? And we're a relatively small company, so I've also been thinking, does this change if you're with a small company or if you were with a bigger company. For example, if you're with a bigger company, there's a lot more people to meet, have conversations, elevator. And I think those interactions are quite important for building a human network within a larger company. For us as a smaller company, we I can meet everyone every day when I'm in the office and equally I can actually meet everyone remotely. In fact, it's somewhat easier because you actually have to set aside specific time for specific conversations. Whereas in the office, that conversations, they're not necessarily scheduled. Maybe that's not actually the most efficient way to do things because maybe you're um, in the middle of something else, the other person may be doing something. And so conversation may be not as fruitful as it could be. Whereas if you have time with an, an agenda and people know what's going on, the conversations can be a lot more focused and fruitful. Yeah, I think what you are saying is actually people-centeredness is very important. And right now in the COVID-19 situation where you don't have those organic conversations for you to build those human connection, you actually have to take a more disciplined approach to make these happen and really set a time and agenda so that your meetings are productive and for all parties that attend those meetings. And then you can continue to build those connections. Lately, I ran a short poll on LinkedIn asking people to rate how many percent of corporate professionals are agile leaders right now. And the results then were quite low, less than 20% people consider corporate professionals agile. So how do you see it? Do you think leaders are agile enough right now? I'm in a bubble because I work in the tech space and I think in the tech space, you have to be agile. Probably I see things through biased glasses, to be honest. I find 
people are agile, but at the same time, when I deal with customers, it's not a matter of people not being agile. It's the systems we have are not agile and often for good reasons. Right? It could be security concerns. It could be just due diligence, making sure things are done. There's a lot of pressure on things like protecting personal data, making sure that systems are not hackable. And these things take time, effort, and investment. So I think two parts, people agility, system agility. We need to also look at the system agility. I find the people I work with are pretty agile, but I'm probably looking at a biased sample. Yes, you bring up a really good point. People agility in the mindset and the system agility. So the people could be agile, but the system might not support them so that they can create the greatest ROI. So probably these two things are always moving in tandem, developing in parallel as well. So what's then your advice to veteran and aspiring leaders out there? Two different groups, right? So veteran leaders, I've got a lot to learn from veteran leaders as well, but hopefully as a veteran leader, people know that there's always more to learn. You're never done. Even what we're talking about today, is it going to be relevant a few years from now that things change? So something that can be a best practice today may not be a best practice tomorrow. And you have to constantly relearn and look at what's relevant today. So I think you can never get comfortable with what you know. Again, that goes back to just accepting change is the only constant. And for aspiring leaders, the most important thing to there is get up and take a leadership role. But even in the UK, when I was being brought up, people often hesitate to step forward and take ownership of something. And the only way you learn leadership and to help drive things forward is by stepping up and doing something. Young people have a lot of advantages that they can do that with less risk. You can do it in things like volunteer associations and things like that. It doesn't have to be in your job. So for aspiring leaders, just step up, take ownership of a problem, helping someone else and learn leadership skills because you'll find a stage in your career where you need to know leadership. And uh, if you get to that stage and you haven't had a chance to practice your skills, it's going to be really tough for you. If you do want to develop your career, at some point as an individual performer you can only get unless you're really the top expert in your field of course we all want to develop our careers to take care of our families and ourselves in retirement leadership is going to be an important part for everyone and so the sooner you can start to polish those skills the better i'm sure by now many viewers will be interested to get connected with andrew so andrew how can they do that if they want to connect and share more with you yeah, I'm a big user of LinkedIn. You can also Google me and find me on other sites and things as well, but LinkedIn works well. Always happy to connect with people on any topic and exchange ideas. When it comes to my field of work, I work with cloud and in particular Google Cloud. And a lot of what we do is in the field of AI, ML and big data. In that field in particular, agility is required because it's a new field. People are learning as they go and they don't necessarily know how to take advantage of these technologies and there's no kind of rule book at the moment so i'm particularly interested to speak to people who may be interested to explore those areas in their business but like i say on any topic just feel free to reach out great thank you so much again for your time your invaluable feedback and going the extra mile to share your advice with everyone including me thank you so much andrew great thanks for the opportunity